So, I actually went yesterday with Ben and Emma and we went to a maple supply store. I bought things to do some collecting of maple sap next spring and I was actually going to make a video in a couple hours on the items that I purchased. But first, every Sunday morning, I try to do something a little special. This morning, the request was pancakes with sausages and blueberries. So I came to the kitchen, I got the sausages out, I made up the batter, I got out the blueberries, and check out the size of these blueberries, they're huge. Um, then I went over to our, our fridge. New fridge, by the way. I've never seen this before, it's a black interior. But I went inside my drawers and the doors, no maple syrup. I was at a maple syrup supply store that sold maple syrup and I don't have any today for my pancakes. Oh, my lamp on the floor. So needless to say, I'm gonna go get changed out of my pajamas and drive to the local market. Luckily, they're not too far to pick up maple syrup. But after this, we will go outside and I'm going to show you some of the items that we purchased to do our own maple syruping. And then next spring, if I don't have any maple syrup for my pancakes, you know I had an epic fail when it came to making them. I'm also hoping to make maple syrup candy, but we'll see. So I just thought I would let you know that here I am kind of laughing inwardly except for when I drive to the store to get the maple syrup, that this happened. Well, hello, kindred spirits. It is a gorgeous October morning, and I thought I would set up outside here and show you some things that Ben and I got yesterday and a couple things that will be in today's episode. Now, this table is from my office. I brought it here, and I thought it would be fun just to set it up in the garden area to put garden baskets on and just to, to work from. It's not gonna last that long, I'm guessing, until I put some um, marine varnish on it, but we'll see. And in the background, you'll probably hear Ben splitting wood. Uh, the past two days, we, he's been splitting, and then we've been stacking it in the barn, so bear with me on that. Um, but we gotta get work done before the winter comes. So yesterday, we decided to take a drive up north and check out a facility that sells items for people who make maple syrup and maple sugar candy. And I went in knowing I just wanted to do small batch. So when we got there, there is some very large equipment, there's bottles, there's all this paraphernalia, and we were overwhelmed. So we asked one of the gentlemen there who ended up being one of the owners, I forget what generation he said, he walked us around and set us up with what we need for pretty much stove top maple syrup. You know, I told him we have the acreage, we have the amount of trees, we even have our old sugar shack. And at first he thought we wanted to do a large elaborate setup. And I had to correct him there and say, no, I just want to be able to do it in the kitchen, stove top and something just to try for fun as a hobby. If I like it, who knows where this will go. So a few things he set us up with is we started with some aluminum buckets that will go on the tree. These are recycled, they're not new, so we are purchasing something that somebody else had already used. I believe we paid $5 a barrel and we set ourselves up with 10. I have no idea if I'll use 10 or not, but we'll see. I wanted to at least have them on hand. Ben grabbed some marking tape. We're gonna walk around a little bit later today and mark some of the trees that are sugar maples. And then we're gonna mark some red maple. And then I purchased covers that will go on top of the buckets to keep debris out. I had to have this galvanized bucket just, just because, but that's not gonna fit. So I just realized that that's not gonna fit. Oh well, but I like the look of it. So I grabbed that, he sold it to me for a dollar. So we have uh, 11 lids, 10 will be functional now that I've just realized that. I bought some of the spouts and hooks that the buckets will go on. And let me see if I can get this here. So this will go into the tree. Get those willow playing. Oops. This one has a little dent, but that doesn't matter. So it's gonna go in the tree and it will hang like this against the tree where the sap will come out. 
Let's see, I also picked up a candy thermometer. I have a small one in the house, but I wanted to get something heavy duty just in case. I do wanna do this a little bit larger scale. So I grabbed this, I forget the price. So I picked up some maple leaf candy molds. I grabbed a Making Maple Syrup, the old fashioned way booklet because that's exactly what I wanted to do. This company sells things for very large to mid-size companies that are making maple syrup who want to resell it and bottle it. I just wanted to do this stove top or on top of a fire and see how this works. So I grabbed this to, to review and the pan. Now I was told I could use any large pans like a lobster pot or any large pots, but I wanted to get this that would go over the two boilers and once again, I'm going to be learning this as I go, so I'm not sure if that will be enough, too much. Something like 10 gallons makes a very small amount. I was going to quote what they say, but I don't remember how much. So that's what I did today um, for the maple syrup, and he even threw us, threw us a little free newspaper for maple syrup makers, so it's official. Another thing we're going to do today is we're going to put organic steaks, organic fertilizer steaks, around the fruit trees I have here in the property. Another thing in today's episode you're going to see is I will be replacing the gasket of our wood stove's door and the glass. We got here and we found out there wasn't one, but there were some pieces, so we knew what to look for. And I went to a wood stove company and picked items up and I'm gonna show you how I put it in. It was very simple. The other day I was mentioning to a handyman about my replacing the gasket, and he says, you can't do that because that's how I make a lot of my business is helping women or replacing the gasket for women in their wood stove. So, sorry, now you guys know how to do it too, and we will go over that a little bit later. But for now, let me get putting this away into the sugar shack, and then we will put out some of the steaks. Let me show you what a maple leaf looks like. Actually, I might collect some of these for my garland, but a maple leaf has these really deep indents right here. And I'm gonna show you another maple leaf that it's very jagged and a little bit different. I'm just gonna take you down here. The sky is a bit ominous on the back side of the house. I know some of you have mentioned that you'll miss the view of our Groton home, but I tell you, the views here with the mountain behind me and watching the weather come in it's gorgeous. Our little sugar shack there. Another aspect of sugar maples is the twigs or the limbs growing off go on either side versus opposite. And I'm gonna see if I can zoom in. Of course, some are gonna break off, but here is a better look at what I was talking about with the branches on either side. If you come down here, there's a branch. There was one here, it came off. And with this one, there was one here, it broke off. Up there, you can see another. So this is, even if there were no leaves, we'd be able to tell it was a sugar maple. I'm getting ready to put the stakes in around the fruit trees. Inside here, we have some stakes. This is the first time I'm opening it. And looks like a cap to cover it with so that they don't break. Let's go put some stakes around our fruit trees. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing is taking these fertilizer stakes and I'm going to go under the drip line of the tree. And what the drip line is are the furthest branches out of the tree. I'm gonna go in that circumference because the roots of the tree are also out at that point. They could be even a little further. But I wanna make sure that I'm getting the fertilizer to the end of the roots and not in the middle, and that's not gonna do the tree any good. Now, don't assume that since you don't have a fruit tree, this isn't for you. If you have any type of flowering plants outside, any type of fruit trees like blueberry bushes or raspberry bushes, 
there are some type of stakes for those as well. And like I said, I'm trying this just to give the tree a little bit extra footing for next year. Hopefully I'll be able to save them. If not, I'm still gonna let them grow and produce what they produce, but it would be wonderful to be able to get some fruit on our own trees. Now I'm gonna place these around the tree. It says about six or seven stakes for a tree this size. So I'm gonna go around right now and drop those and then I'm going to hit them into place. So I'm just gonna start here and I'm gonna walk out to my furthest corner and I'm just gonna poke it upward a little bit so that I will find it. I already could tell I hit a rock there so this is going to be interesting. Let's see here. Oh yes, very rocky soil. This will be fun. <laughs> Finding them is going to be interesting too amongst all these leaves. Eight, four. Six. I'm actually going to do seven because I've spaced these out quite a bit. And I'll have one left for starting the other tree all right so these come with a little end cap let me come up here and show you a little closer so this has a little cap that goes on the end just so I can hammer it and it hopefully won't break apart I did research some of these and it some of the companies people were complaining that they just completely disintegrated while they were hammering them so this one had pretty good reviews keeping my fingers crossed. So let's see, now it's finding them amongst all these leaves, silly me. So let's see, finding my drip line, here's one. All right, I don't know if I'm in view here, I apologize. I'm gonna bring this one out just a little bit. This is getting my heart pumping. All right. I think that's it. I think that's it. All right, so now I just have to Catch my breath, do the tree behind you, which is a green apple of some sort. They're of course gone now. I can see just a little portion of it. And I have no idea what type of apple this was. I know it was red, but I don't know what variety it was. And then there's a tiny little tree over here. I will put, I'll put at least one fertilizer stake near it. I know I'll have an extra left from this box. And then I have a pear tree I have to do. All right, let's go. And this time, I'm just gonna carry the box around with me. It was too much just to look for them. Now I'm gonna head over to a little pear tree that is here. And this is when that no less than 30 inches will come into play, because there is not a large drip line. But here's the little pear tree with some fruit on it. I'm going to ask the arborist that is helping us if I can have this replanted, would it be successful? Here is what I was talking about, the no closer than 30 inches. Since this doesn't have a large drip line, I'm gonna come out 30 inches and I'm just gonna use two stakes here. And then I'm probably going to pluck that pear.
so now I have an apple from the tree I found on the ground. Actually, I have two. I'm going to see if I can figure out the variety by looking these up in one of the vintage tree books that I just bought on a consignment store, thrift store shopping spree, and I will actually show you those items. And I have now have two pears. So, the fruits of sugarwood. How to put gaskets on wood stove doors and wood stove glass. Now, when we purchased the house, we noticed that this wood stove did not have gaskets not only around the door itself, but in the glass here. You could see that it's moving a little bit. And I figured out that this door does come off easily. The previous owner left some pieces of the gasket, so I was able to go to a store with Ben and I picked up some new things. Came home and I simply lifted up the door and I'm bringing it to the dining room table where I'm gonna work on it. And I'm gonna show you as I do this, how to change out this gasket. So if you already have a gasket and you want to change it out, just simply scrape it out. Now I picked up some stove gasket cement. I There was some left here, but I got a new bottle. This is the gasket that's going to go around the outside of the door, and there are different size gaskets for each wood stove, so make sure you find one that is for yours. And this gasket gets folded over the glass and then reinserted. Once again, there are different sizes for the glass. I have a few tools here. I first grabbed my uh, flathead screwdriver just to scrape away some of the extra old cement and some of the fibers from the previous gasket. And then I have an Allen wrench. I'm not sure if all gaskets, or I'm sorry, all doors have the need for Allen wrenches or if they're regular screws, but this is held in by four clips. And I was able to open two of them, but the bottom ones you'll see in a while I wasn't able to, so I have to do something on that. So here are the ones that I just could not get it to work. So I got our handy dandy WD-40, and there are other items that can be used for loosening bolts. So I gave it a quick shake, I'm gonna spray it, and I do let this sit for a while while I'm working on the project. Now, since I'm pretty impatient, luckily the top two screws came out and I was able to lift the glass. I just moved the little clips to the side. I wish I got a close up for you, but I'm just sliding them sideways so I could lift the glass up and slide it out from the bottom ones. And in a while, those will loosen on the bottom because I do need those loose once I put the glass back in. Now, this glass also has a lot of old crud from the previous gasket, and I need to sit and clean this off before I put the new one on. So right now I decided I'm going to start with the door and I'm going all the way around and I'm going to clean out all of the channel and getting rid of all of the old debris that was left from the cement and any of the fibers because you want to have a nice solid adhesion of the, the cement. And then I started cleaning off the glass. This was a little bit harder, but I did as, uh, you know, as good of a job as I could. Once again, you want to have a nice tight seal because this is going to help keep the flame from leaving the chamber of the wood stove. Now I didn't have my vacuum here so I ended up having to sweep it up and luckily with a little bit of effort here I was able to finally pop and turn these screws because once again I do need those to be off so I can put it back in. Now on my door there's a little crisscross here when I'm putting the exterior gasket you want to start in the corner and I'm showing here that you don't want to overlap it because that would be just too thick for when you're closing the door. So what you do is you do one on top, one on bottom, and then where my middle finger is there, it actually is, has a nice tight seal. I also made sure I had plenty of the gasket before I went around and, and cut it.
Now I'm going to grab the cement. Now this product also can come in the form of a caulking gun that you would use a tube, but I decided to go this way and I was informed to kind of squish it around and kind of make it a little bit more pliable by squeezing the tube before I cut it open. And then I cut it with a really sharp pair of scissors. And it's a little bit tricky sometimes when I was going around and then it would seal up, but I had to recut it. And I simply, once again, I keep using the word simply, but you go around and you place your gasket in. You don't pull the gasket, you don't scrunch it up, simply lie it on top. And I'm using the edge of my screwdriver for a lack of other tools close by, just to uh, press it into the, the cement. And now I'm all the way around. I'm going to make this corner, press it down, and then once I have the ending point there, I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to press it in. And a little bit later, I don't think I show it, I do go around with some little fine scissors and I just clean up that, that edge look that's a little bit frayed looking. Now for the glass, some of the tape that I saw has just the adhesive in the center. This particular one has the adhesive from edge to edge. And on the glass, I'm going to start it where one of the tabs are so that when it's in, it's held in nice and tight. Now, when you're doing this, it's a lot easier if you pre-fold your gasket cording for the edge. But since this had a lot of the adhesive already, it was hard to keep it folded. But it just, you know, was a little bit extra guide for making sure it's center. And once again, once I get to my end point, I cut it. And then I'm just going to go around and make sure that adhesive is pressed down all the way. With all of my little screws out, I'm going to turn up my tabs. I don't know if all doors have tabs like this, but mine do. And I'm starting at the bottom, I'm going to slide it down into the gasket area, making sure the tab is nice and tight. And then I'm going to do the same at the top, and then I'm going to just screw those tabs in. It really is a lot simpler than what you might think, other than getting dirty. And then I pop the door on. I don't know if all doors come off this easy, but this was super easy. And then I close the door and I'm going to let it set for 24 hours. And voila, we got to use our Yodel wood stove. Well, I hope you enjoyed those three tasks that I did around the house. And fortunately, but unfortunately, I have a lot more of these small tasks to do. But we will also be doing some more cooking and crafting. I'm still trying to get my oven repaired. I'm going to show you in one of the videos one of the issues that was wrong with it. So until then, kindred spirits, thank you again for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye now.